All right, rear end housing has arrived. Okay, so I am setting this up for a three degree pinion angle, which is about what I'm estimating the transmission angle is gonna be. So uh, this is another weird one from the, the heights instructions wanted a uh, two degree up when I was always taught to do the same as what was on the transmission regardless, which is three degrees down. So I'm gonna do it the way I've always done it. So anyway, I have set up my little gauge here. I leveled up the trans, uh, trans rear end housing, set up the old bottle jack, cranked her up until I hit the precise angle that I want. Then I'll put a few tacks on that. Just to hold it, I'm not gonna go too crazy again, just in case I have to remove it and, and change its location. I wanna be able to do that without making a big mess. So I'll put a few tacks on that, repeat the process on the other side, and then uh, move on to the panter bar mount. All right, got those tacked on. Did some, you know, fairly substantial tacks, but again, in places where I can grind them off if I need to. Got my uh, uh, panter bar bracket on there. And I think I'm ready to throw this in. I'm waiting for a tap to re-tap the lower control arms here. I had to take two inches off those to fit the frame. So once the gets here, I believe it'll be here today, I can tap that and set that right in. So this is exciting get it uh, get it in place all right been plugging away at this um, yeah getting all these four link bars just right is a bit tricky um, and, and here's the trick you adjust the top one to get in and I've marked the frame here to uh, axle center so wheelbase and then I put a small mark on the top of the uh, rear end just as another reference to line those two points up then you adjust the top rods to get the wheelbase right on both sides um, which is fine then the bottom rods you adjust to get the angle proper on the face of the pinion angle on the face of the rear end so I have four degrees on the motor three to four depending Right now, I'm currently set at four back here because I wanted to make sure I could get all of it. So, and again, that's down angle if you're coming from the front of the car to the back. So the motor goes down at four degrees, drive shaft, rear end down at four degrees. So that's kind of the idea. And that is ride height. I got my uh, mock shocks in there and basically just set those exactly at what the 13 and a half, which is the proper ride heights for the QA1s that I have. So I got that set up. Um, I also got the, uh, ugh, hang on. Also got the rear sway bar welded up. Now I have to make brackets for the top of the rear end to attach this. So that's probably one of the next things I'll do is get that all lined up, attached, and tacked in place. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do, however, before I do that, uh, the panter bar's in, I got the rear end centered up. I got about, oh, between here and here, there's about three eighths of an inch, which should be fine. Um, I centered it up, did all that, Adjusted my four link bars one more time. Uh, it, it all looks very, very good, very convincing. Um, like I said, the next thing to do is to rig up the sway bar mounts. But before I do that, I think I'm gonna pull the mock shocks out and just test uh, with the jack through full travel up and down, just to make sure I don't have any binds or anything else going on in there that would limit what we have to do. So. Gonna work on that next, then I will attach the sway bar mounts. Um, once that is complete, I gotta look at the list. 
At some point, I've then got to pull this out so I can weld up all the brackets, um, weld up the frame, flip the frame over, get the tops and the bottoms really good on all the brackets and bars. Um, and I think I'm in pretty good shape. There's plenty of room behind the rear end to the sway bar, I mean the panner bar and the sway bar. Um, if I really wanted to get fussy, I could probably move my sway bar back a little bit more. Like push it back maybe, I don't know, three quarters of an inch just to get it centered up on the, on the axle better. But I got to see what it looks like through travel. So as it goes up and down, you know, where is it? Where is it optimal, right? So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, rear end housing looks great. I think this is a, a good, this is a Curry manufactured rear end housing. Um, it's got a bunch of debris in it that I'm gonna have to get in there and clean out before I get anywhere near this with axles or a third member. But uh, after I get everything welded up, I probably won't weld this rear crossbar in until after I fit it to the body just to make sure everything lines up properly. This bar here runs pretty much in front of this tub up here. So, you know, it's kind of a crucial alignment. But I think I'm in good shape. Uh, so I won't weld that up final until later just to make sure that I have everything proper. And the next step, I guess, is to, again, the bracket widths won't change for this, even if I do move it back a little bit. Um, that'll be fine. So, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm going to test travel, go up and down with it, make sure it'll go through the full range of motion. If I get that right, and I believe it is right, I will then move on to uh, probably pulling it all back apart again, welding up brackets, welding up the rear end, Get everything out of here, flip the thing over, weld the brackets on the bottom so they're all permanent. Then put it all back together again and uh, put it back together so that I can um, mock it up with the axles and the, and the third member and all that and actually set it on the floor. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me, uh, I'll bring you back when I chest the motion, uh, chest the travel and let's, we'll figure it out from there okay got the rear sway bar links on just tacked them in place um, that all seems pretty good I don't really see any uh, challenges there uh, when I go all the way up I am hitting this weld right here so I've yellow taped that which is a little trick there you Throw some yellow tape on it. When you flip it over, you remember to grind that. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for tacking in all of the do-habs and do-hickeys and uh, mounting points back here. I'm pretty comfortable. I've checked the travel up. I've checked the travel down. It's the mock shocks here have it sitting at ride height right now. I have about, yeah, not too much travel up, um, <laughs> you know. It's not huge, but it's about all you're going to get to get it at the, uh, the right height where you really want it. So anyway, everything's looking pretty good. Of course, I could change that ride height if I want to. Just depends on what it looks like when we get it. But yeah, that's basically where I'm at. So I'm going to continue mocking up the rear end, but that is it for the mounting points. Everything came out pretty good. I was at, least, at first worried that those rods over there were a little longer than these, but it is less than an eighth of an inch difference. So based on all the tolerances I have here, I'm, I'm not concerned about that at all. Um, rear end is squared to the front end. It's sitting at the right, at least theoretical pinion angle right now. Can't complain. So yeah, that'll be the next step. Get the rear end completed, put the shocks back here, get it on the shocks and go back to building up the front end, getting the caster and camber initially set. Again, none of it really matters. I just want to make sure it'll, it'll go to the right location. I have no doubt that it will, but 
if I can get it documented and close, then when I uh, take it all pack apart for paint or powder coat or whatever I decide to do, um, I'll know where it's got to go back together. So initially, that's the plan. Get it, get it on the ground, get it, make it a roller, and then set the motor in it motor and tranny and see what that looks like and start uh, mocking that up at that point I should be able to measure for a drive shaft even so uh, yeah anyway good start so I've test fitted up the coilovers just to make sure I had clearance on everything and it clears everything beautifully I have no issues there so I was a little worried you know just make sure everything matched the model but I've got Plenty of clearance, I'm not concerned at all. So I am gonna blow this all back apart, take this all back out, mostly so I can roll the chassis over and weld everything upside down because after I put this together for the last time, it's gonna to go to the floor, so it's gonna come off the rotisserie. So I wanna you know, get a chance to weld all that, especially the upside down welds uh, in the right orientation so that I can do a nice job. So yeah, this all is fitted up. Everything's in here now. Everything seems to look good. Uh, all the angles are right. I think I'm off a little bit on one of these tabs here, or these two tabs. So I'm probably gonna pop those off and clock those up to match the other one. But other than that, and I think the reason is, is this, this uh, joint was screwed out a little bit. And the other one wasn't, so blew it. But it's just tacked in, so I should be able to correct that. Um, but yeah, we're ready to go. So I'm going to blow this apart, get some help to flip this over, and we'll see what we got. Okay. See, so sunny side down. Now I'm going to go through and hit all these brackets that weren't welded, that aren't welded yet. I'm going to hit those from this side so I can get, you know, some good quality welds ish um, then I'll flip it back over to do the top side but this makes it super convenient to get like all of these and the, you know these faces and this will this will clean it right up get all this welded up cut off the jack stands here get these removed um, so that when I do flip it back over, I can put it together and set it on the ground eventually. So that'll be a milestone. But anyway, getting ready to get into the welding. All right, so here's another little thing I've been meaning to do is the fuel line's gonna come down this passenger side fuel rail, uh, frame rail. Uh, I gotta pass through for it back there. I really wanted one up here as well so I can bring it out through here and just up the side of the frame rail and put it to the firewall. Uh, so this side was quite easy. Just hit it with a hole saw and uh, you know played with it till it fit right. The other side I had to cut with a plasma so it's not as beautiful but it's it'll work. I can weld that up but now you know that gives me a nice sealed channel um, I was actually debating leaving the, the pipe back a little bit further here, too, just to uh, retain it some. I might do that. I might just, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll see. But i got to clean this side up a little bit, hit it with the sander, a couple strategic locations, and I'll have that right where I want it. So, yeah, this is just a little, you know, planning ahead thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to finish this up. The rest of the welds are done. Uh, you know, so I was able to uh, weld up the bottom of these brackets. And, and that's why you flip it over. I mean, I, I could have never welded that that nice upside down for sure. So all the brackets are welded on this side now. I'll flip it back. I took off the jack stands. I'll flip it back over now, weld the other sides, and that'll probably be the last time I have to flip this. Unless I use the rotisserie to paint the frame, which I could. I'm still debating whether to go powder coat or paint. Uh, paint will be considerably less money. Um, 
and I've got some pretty decent chassis paint. So uh, could go either way. We'll see. We'll see what the how the mood strikes when the time comes. So yeah, I'm gonna flip this back over now. Well, first I'm gonna weld that pipe up, get that where I want it. Flip this thing back over. Weld the tops of the all the brackets that I finished off on the bottoms. Then I'll move over to the rear end and weld up all the brackets on the rear end. So yeah, that's where I'm at. So we've progressed a bit. Got everything welded up. Chassis flipped back over. I threw in the third member. Just put the cheap gasket that it came with in there. Um, dropped the axles in, pressed in the studs. Uh, nothing big surprising there. Um, so yeah, that looks all very good. I um, think I probably should have waited to put those axles in until after I'd gone through the rear brake procedure because I'm pretty sure I got to take them back out. But who cares? It's a two-minute job. So anyway, um, everything seems to fit, lines up good, shocks line up good. Uh, pretty happy with all of that right now. So this will, uh, this will be a good-looking setup. The, uh, I did relocate this sway bar mount. Uh, everything's welded up. I don't think there's anything back here I still need to weld other than these sway bar brackets. I didn't want to weld those in permanent until after it's in the body just in case I got to adjust those a little bit. But those are super easy to weld after the fact, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, <coughs> other than that, that all came together nicely. I'm gonna clip on the, start working up the rear brake assembly, make sure everything fits right, understand where the hose brackets have gotta go, understand where the uh, um, emergency brake cable brackets need to go, and you know, get as much of that laid out and the brackets welded in place so that I can. So, that's, I uh, guess I'll bring you back once I start to decipher those rear brake assemblies because they're a Willward assembly, but they have an internal drum for a parking brake, for emergency brake. Um, never used them before, so we'll see what that's like. All right, so this is a really nice setup. Um, I'll, I'll give you the part number on the whole kit down in the description below in the, uh, the order. But basically this is for the large flange. Um, I think it's called the Torino style. So the large flange pattern here. And ultimately what it does is <laughs> it's super simple. It just clamp this on, slide your act, you know, just put this in slide your axle back in, clamp it with the retainer and the stock bolts, and that's pretty much it. And literally one shim on the caliber, and this thing, as it said, you know, start with one shim, um, and it, it lined up beautifully on the other side. So, yeah, it's, and of course I did have to take the axle back out, but hey, you know, had to mock it up. Anyway, I um, love it. I think this is a great setup. This works, should work exceptionally well for e-brake cable type solutions. Um, so I will continue to plug along at this and figure out my cable routing after. But for right now, pretty happy with this. And there it is, uh, nice little setup. It's got a little concentric ring adapter in here to, to center the rotor up perfectly on the hub. And uh, I think that's pretty nice. And it, it keeps the, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it keeps the disc centered beautifully. Um, one shim, good start. So it's certainly good enough for a mock-up. Now I've got to figure out where my brake hoses route. Um, that's one of the next things I need to deal with and then got, I'm a little concerned about this cable I'm gonna have to really you know mani manipulate this to get it back underneath the frame before um, before I have interference with the rim and tire 
So I'm gonna tackle that tomorrow, figure out where the clips have got to go for those for the cables and the hoses and get those tacked onto the frame and the rear end as well. So kind of hoping I can just kind of sneak it under here, run the cable down through this way, come underneath like it normally would, and then it has that a setup in the middle somewhere that uh, ties it together. So anyway, we'll, uh, we'll dig into the instructions for the Willwood cable setup tomorrow. But overall, hey, that's pretty uh, pretty positive advancement right there. We got the rear end in, mocked up. Third member in, axles in, brakes on, shocks in, sway bar in. Everything seems to fit and lines up okay-ish. For right now, I mean, we, I didn't do any precise alignment on it yet, but it's all very, very close, so I'm feeling fine about that. Um, so once I get this finished up, I will move on to the front end, get that finished up. Just again, I'm gonna set caster and camber just to, as a starting point. I'm not you know, gonna be too precise about it, but I just wanna make sure everything go where it says it's gonna go, where it needs to go. Um, I've got the mock shocks I can put in the front to kind of hold all that together. Then once I get that done I'll put the regular shocks in and put it on the ground we'll have a roller but yeah this is a big step big step that that pumpkin's been around here for months I've been gagging to put that in the rear end and uh, it's heavy no doubt about that but um, hey what are you gonna do so looks good pretty pretty happy with everything I see so far from a fabrication standpoint, I don't see anything I would do a whole lot different at this point. So, we will see. So that pretty much wraps up the, uh, the mock-up of the rear end. I got the brake cables, uh, e-brake cables. I just put a uh, rib nut under here with a re regular retainer. I was able to pass them through the same hole as the brake line, so that's nice. And then I put a plate here to, there's like a little retention affair that holds the two ends and then the cable from the pedal comes down and I put another pass through for that. So that'll come, the e-brake uh, e -brake cable will come straight through here and underneath this on the bottom side will be the, the uh, one to two transition. Um, these get cut and trimmed, so it all fits pretty good. Uh, this is gonna get wrapped up against the body so it's out of the way like so and that should do it uh, for the brake hoses I put the clip down there figured that's the very best way to keep it from getting pinched it's out of the way I can loop the the brake line up like this quite easily just make a little S turn and that should all look super clean uh, the only other thing I have left to look at is the uh, the hose that takes the the brake line from the frame down to the to the brake, uh, rear end housing. So this side it looks pretty much this is pretty much wrapped up. I did put in a couple of gussets here. I just made them out of two by two, cut it 45, you know, so that way you can't gather water or dirt or anything. I just tacked those in. I'm 99.9% .9 sure there's plenty of room for those, but didn't want to risk it. These up front, I put in a, get a gusset here too from the top of the frame down. Again, not really sure any of that's needed, but it certainly can't hurt. And it does tend to follow the body line a little better. Um, and it, it puts all the strength out to this point now and not through the bend. So that should be good. Uh, pretty happy with that. Uh, and I know that'll fit because I was, I was, I could go full height to this mark and I put this mark in here saying that it had to be tapered off by there. So that, that does the trick. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Uh, I did get my longer brake hoses for the front calipers and they seem good. They're two inches longer. So these are 16. And I just used the 14s in the back. So 
You don't necessarily need uh, hoses in the back, but it's a good idea when you're changing brakes to be able to, you know, move the caliper around without having to take, without worrying about breaking a brake line or bending anything important. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the rear end. It's mocked up. I'm happy with all of that. Um, feeling good about it. Next step is I'm going to go on to the front end now and kind of finish putting that together, put the, the mock shocks in and try to, uh, get the caster camber set and the toe just somewhat near right. And I will show you what that's like when I get to it. But this will probably conclude this video anyway. So um, just want to get this one wrapped up. There was, a, there was a lot of work getting that rear end all in and everything perfect. So uh, pretty, pretty stoked that that's done actually. So anyway. <laughs>